Yeah, recording's going. All right, dope. All right. Uh, so my name is George Castro. I've been doing vermi composting uh, for a few years now, which is composting with worms, um, which sounds kind of gross. There are worms in here. I hope Amanda is listening because um, she does not like worms. Um, so the way this works is there's a few different kinds of composting. Most of you are familiar with hot composting, which is that pile of smelly stuff on a farm or somewhere, or you might have seen those tumbler things. Um, the last time we did this, I was starting this worm farm from scratch. So there's many different uh, kinds of worm farms. Um, this, I thought this one was cool because it's small. We had a larger one before. It was kind of annoying. It was like a bag. Um, so the way these work is um, you put some dirt, uh, some substrate in it. The worms themselves came in like this peat stuff. And then I use things from around the house uh, to kind of create the bedding for the worms. And then we use this as a place to dispose of all of our, a lot of our organic waste. So the kind of rule of thumb is if, you know, it would naturally occur, the worms would eat it, it's okay to go in here. Um, so things like fruit scraps, um, vegetables, any organic material, but not things like dairy products or fat or meat or, or anything like that. So the way it works is actually, it's better if I just show you here, but first, before I do that, this worm farm is designed to brew a little thing that we call worm tea. So if you come here, there's actually a hole at the bottom of this worm farm. And when I add water, it seeps through all of the castings, like that's the worm poop. This is worm poop, if you haven't figured it out yet. Um, it kind of creates this little solution here. And what we do for our plants and stuff is we put one part of this per nine parts of water. So you want a 10% solution of this. Um, and then we use that to water our plants on our patio and stuff. And there is no better fertilizer than natural fertilizer, especially when it comes to worms. So I'm gonna open the lid and find out what's going on inside. So you don't have to wear um, gloves. It's just, I'm gonna work after this. And you know, I don't want worm poop all over my keyboard or whatever. So, so the way it works, this kind of style, you got a lid. There's a hole at the bottom, so there's this little grill here. It kind of catches if we have any escapees. Uh, no worries, we generally don't have escapees. And with this kind of decomposition, you're looking for an earthy smell, which, how's it smell? Earthy. Yes, so you don't want a vinegar smell. You definitely don't want this to turn into hot combustion, which is um, when there's no oxygen in there. So it, with, with this kind of earth, hot composting, not combustion, that's crazy. Um, so. As I put stuff in here, I keep a lot of water in here. We keep everything nice and cool. And the oxygen in here lets the stuff to break down. And then the worms themselves don't actually eat all of the stuff that you put in here, but kind of the germs and the ecosystem that builds into a worm farm um, helps break stuff down. So what we do is I have a paper shredder, all the junk mail that we use, we shred anything cardboard, anything paper, um, and then what I do is I use that as bedding in here. So Jill, if you can bring the camera and kind of point down if can everyone, can everyone see inside the bin? So here I have an old. Yeah, um, we can see it. Yeah, this is a, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't see the video. So y'all have to guide me here. Okay. Um, so this is an old shopping bag. I'm gonna move it out of the way. There's a worm, these are red wiggler worms. There's different kind of worms that you can use. But um, I didn't shred this paper cause I kind of do this like kind of little layer thing going on so that I can keep a nice healthy Ooh. thing going on here. So in here, I'm gonna dig in. Um, what is plastic? That's definitely not good. Okay, so there are some worms stuck in this plastic. It's fine, it's fine. I'll just throw that away. So worms are pretty hardy creatures. Generally speaking, they'll eat anything um, except the things that I were talking about. And it's really hard to like mess this up. So if I dig in here, all of this, especially those who were, who were around, a few weeks ago, this was all shredded paper. And as if you look, it's kind of turning into this bedding. And as I dig deeper, um, I'll actually start to get to the worm casting, which is the good stuff that we want and the stuff that we'll be removing regularly. And then using that as compost for our plants or giving it to a neighbor, sticking in your garden. So those of you remember, like you can still see some of this looks like old newspaper and things like that. And I'm looking at these worms and they're looking pretty good. Um, I started with 500. I literally ordered them from Amazon. And they've got a kind of nice, 
I've got moisture. I've got balls of worms here. Check that out. They are looking pretty good. I don't really know how to count worms, but I can already tell this is definitely, ooh, that's a good one. Look at the size of that one. Wow. Yeah. Um, but I can already tell that there's definitely way more worms than I had in here before. So the way it works is, you know, once I started this, I put that bedding, this was just shredded paper, you know, and I, I keep it wet and moist. I have, you know, a, uh, a sprayer that I keep. You don't want them drowning, um, but you want to keep it moist as if, you know, they were underground. And this kind of design of uh, worm farm kind of makes it easy for me. Uh, when I add stuff, I keep it moist. And remember, as we add things, um, things have moisture in them. So if we add fruit, vegetables, you know, they obviously have water stuff. So in this example, uh, so we're looking, we're digging. It's nice and moist in here. I'm not a worm expert. I don't know what it's like underground. But this, I imagine it looks a lot like this. Um, so yesterday, we cooked some stuff. Jill had a spare um, cucumber, you know, anything that you really have. And you can always just shove stuff on top. But remember, too, we're trying to uh, make compost, right? So laying stuff on top, yeah, it'll get to it eventually. But I don't kind of want rotting fruit on top of my bin. So that's why I kind of have those layers where when we have scraps, if you're cooking, we kind of collect them in a little bowl. And then when you're done, you kind of shove them in here. So we're going to give them a nice treat. This is pretty awesome. This is a cucumber. So Jill, kind of top view. So we're just going to stick it right there. And then we're going to kind of do it a little of this. I didn't mean to disturb y'all. I apologize. Sure. And then they'll figure it out. I don't want to, I don't want to bury it too deeply there. Um, so a lot of this stuff is still bedding. I'm not seeing a lot of hard, clumpy, fluffy um, stuff that would be compost. That takes a while. You see, as I dig underneath, um, you could definitely see uh there's more worms and stuff in there so i'll give them a little treat that's pretty good um i'm gonna hook them up with a little moisture remember it's a vegetable so it's gonna have water in there so i'm not sweating it the thing's kind of designed to um you know wick moisture away as you saw if, um what, what i try to do is replicate a rainstorm once a week or so i'll pour a glass of water in here and the water will kind of drain all the way through and get collected that's kind of brewing the worm tea but it keeps the things moist um and it doesn't drown them. If you do overwater it, they will start to kind of get to the sides or get on. So um, I've, I've kind of buried this, have a nice snack, wormies. And then this, here's another little bit is, um, I got this from my lawn, just a clump of lawn. Remember, it's all organic, so it's fine. I just wanted to see how lawn and grass kind of breaks down in the worm bin, just to see it. Um, work and then normally like a big bag like this I would should have actually broken it up a little bit to make it easier for them they will eat all of this stuff all of the paper and leave behind um their castings which is their food as this gets filled up we how long we run this now past three four months um this bin actually has a design what happens is i will scoop out uh, a lot of their poop and we'll get there once we get there. And then I place this on top and then my next piece of food goes in here and then I put the lid on. And then all the worms will chase the food and come up. And then this tray will become my empty one and then I'll flip it on the top. So that's kind of the life cycle, so how it works. And then the last thing I wanna do, you don't need to do this, but I always find it nice is to keep a nice barrier here. Like I said, this doesn't really smell, but I do like to keep, some people keep like a tarp here but I want something to keep the moisture in. If you've been in my last things, you know I'm a stickler for dinosaurs that are correct. These are obviously incorrect, so it all becomes worm food <laughs> because your raptors don't have feathers on them. And I just kind of lay it like this, you know? And as I, as I close this lid, I won't open. So the last time I really opened this lid, other than opening it every once in a while and spraying it down like this a little bit, is the last time that we had one of these meetings. So generally, I'm just letting nature work. Um, and as we cook, as we get scraps and things like that. And for me, it's, it's been really useful because we found ourselves now that we're both working from home, we're generating a lot more garbage, a lot more food scraps. Um, you know, it feels like the garbage truck comes later and later and we're like filling up our garbage cans. And I was like, you know, if we can at least remove a lot of our paper waste into here and you know, some of our organic waste as we cook and stuff, it would be useful. So I will do that and then I will close the lid. And I am done. 
and I won't touch it again for another few weeks. So that's um, worm composting in a nutshell. And just to show you, um, Amanda had some questions. Was there any escapees or things like that? We really haven't had any. But for me, this is kind of like a natural organic thing. So there's no problem. Just keep it, keeping it in your kitchen. And it's just a good way to kind of recycle and make, make good stuff for your garden and your flowers and plants. And it just feels like you're being hyper efficient with all the food that you're eating and Scott. And with that, that is all I have. Thanks. Oh, any questions? Sorry. Was that gross? I hope I hope it was. It was great. <laughs> so yeah, so generally speaking, about once a year I'll empty out all the castings. I haven't really shown that yet. And then um, we don't have a garden. We have plants and stuff, but we don't have like a full garden. So usually you're trying to find someone who has a full-time garden who could really take advantage of, excuse me, of the natural composting is good because it's really good compost. You can't, you, nothing really beats organic uh, worm compost. 